Yo, what's happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you are all are doing well. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video, which is something a little bit different. I wanted to come up with a really difficult task and present it to you guys in a video. So in today, now, in this piece of content, I'm going to... I'm going to say speculate, but that's not the right word. I'm going to go through what I think is Frank Lampard's strongest... Chelsea lineup at the moment. Now, this isn't if everyone's fit, but I'm going a form. So this isn't putting in Prime and Golo Kante. Just because people are, say, fit and not injured, doesn't mean they're in the best vein of form or whatever. So I'm gonna be talking about that, what works for the way Frank Lampard wants to play, you know. If it was a 3-4-3 with a two-man midfield playing counter-attacking football, always, of course, you're gonna put N'Golo Kante in there. But for the sake of this video, it's a 4-3-3, and I'm gonna go through each position and tell you who I think is the best player to play there at the moment, all things considered, form, etc. Yeah. And it's so, so difficult. I was gonna, I, okay. Let's just start and get into it. And obviously as I go, comment your thoughts down below and disagree with me like I'm sure everyone will. Starting between the sticks, Kepa Aritha Balaga. Obviously he was put out into the cold after dismal run of form, performing really poorly indeed and costing Chelsea in many ways. But after a few games out and being brought back into the team, Kepa looks like he's the best option again, and although Willy Caballero tried his hardest while Kepa was out, Kepa's the more talented goalkeeper. He's the best option. He's in goal in my starting 11. At right back, yes, it's Rhys James. You don't really need to spend much time here. Rhys James has been widely recognised as an absolutely superb young talent, very versatile, can play in midfield as well if he needs to move around. Immaculate delivery. Good defending, super strength and speed, etc, etc, etc. Left back, this kind of hurts to do this, but I think it has to be Marcus Alonso. Although Emerson sh meant to be the better conventional left back, even though he's out of favour. And then Aspi Laqueta is more defensive as a left back. But if Marcus Alonso, if the whole team are going to have good defensive performances as a collective, you don't necessarily have to worry about Marcus Alonso getting turned so much, uh, you know, with his slow pace, slow turning circle, and just his individual frailties. But in my hypothetical world, he can start at left back here because everyone's playing really well and having a lovely time. Right then, a centre-back partnership. This is an incredibly difficult one as well, because Frank's chopped and changed the centre-backs throughout the season with varied results. One time a centre-back will play well, then he'll be awful the next week, and really it's very, very difficult to ascertain who is actually in form. I'm going to go for Antonio Rudiger, who was actually really poor recently. Um, and just found a bit more form in these last couple of games because he is the most senior and provided the team settled and have a calm head I think Rudiger can shine and demonstrate his more senior ability on the ball and I'm gonna partner Antonio Rudiger with Andreas Christensen. Christensen's probably been the most consistent out of the bunch over the season. He's had his poor moments as well. Um, he often looks like he's not physically strong enough but in terms of his positioning he's been very good. He hasn't done any like individual how or anything like Zuma and Rudiger have at times and Tomori as well to be honest so he was my first choice and I'm partnering Christensen with Rudiger there's my back five people right are you ready for the hardest part <laughs> the midfield right so midfield free and it's very very difficult so I'm gonna tell you now Kante is not in this midfield free he might be the most talented but he does his best work in a midfield too and he hasn't been in great form this season often, so you can crit criticise me all you like. The way Chelsea are playing right now, if you look at the win percentage with him in and without the team, it's astronomically better with, with, without Kante in the side. It's not a slot on Kante, he's Chelsea's best player probably. It's just for this theoretical lineup, so no Kante. Mason Mount has to start, and I tell you why, because if, you, if Chelsea are playing well, a lot of it has, is to do with him down to his pressing. Now, obviously, he scored a great goal recently. Uh, he was denied a couple of world-class goals recently as well in the last couple of games. But actually, it's a systemic 
thing. The way he moves, the way he presses, he can occupy the left wing, he can occupy the number 10, and of course the left centre mid uh, role. Now, again, if, if, if this was like a, a form thing, or if I could just choose anyone on talent, I'd be choosing the likes of Kante. And, of course, you know me, I'm a Ruben Loftus-Cheek super fan, so he would be in there. But because he's been out, this is a sort of recovery season for, for him. It's Mason Mount because he shows he knows how to play how Frank Lampard wants him to play, I mean. Right, on the other side of the midfield, I'm going to have Mateo Kovacic. Kovacic has arguably been Chelsea's player of the season. He had, he had dipped at points throughout the season, but in terms of demonstrating ability at the highest level against Bayern Munich, he was the only Chelsea player that was truly, truly shining. And although he's not so much of an offensive threat in terms of ball progression and dribbling out of the press he is immaculate so you've got Mount doing the press you've got Kovacic escaping the press they're the, my two first midfielders now in terms of playing the base of the pivot this was difficult and I'm gonna have to jump on the hype train now I'm a massive Jorginho fan but if we're gonna be talking recent performances if we're gonna be talking form if we're gonna be talking about how Frank Lampard wants his particular team to play and what fits if you're good enough you're old enough for the moment I'm putting Billy Gilmore in there. So yes, the young Scottish Regista playmaker, quarterback, DM, Iniesta, Xavi, blend, whatever you want to call him, he's in there. Now, I know that might sound reactionary in short-termism, but the fact remains he's won two consecutive Man of the Match awards in high-profile games, makes the team tick so much better. So off the bat, you notice Chelsea's midfield was arguably one of the strongest in the Premier League, and that was because Chelsea's midfield contained Jorginho, Kovacic and Kante, three elite, arguably world-class, well Kante is world-class, but the other two close to world-class players. And that's purely because, like I said, I'm going off form and I'm going off what works for Frank Lampard's current style of play, and those three that I've selected work a lot better for Frank Lampard's style of play. So it's Kovacic, Gilmore and Mount. Obviously the other three are more accomplished, better players, well, Kovacic will be in there as well, but you know, Ruben Loftus-Cheek I'd have generally as well, so don't slate me in the comments. All right, the front three is very, very difficult, but I'm gonna start on the left wing, and he has been in good form this season when he hasn't been injured, so I am going to go for... Christian Pulisic. The American had exploded on the scene and he does look like he can offer something superb. He's very good at dribbling with the ball close to his feet, but he can run in behind as well. His combinational play might not be as good as other forwards, but that will come with time as he learns to play with these players. But in terms of him running in behind and also dribbling the ball into the box, they're two completely different player traits and he can do them both very well. So he offers too much to drop out of this team. Christian Pulisic is on the left wing. Although Pedro has been very good of late, his industry is that he's demonstrated has been excellent, better than Willian. The right wing position is going to be between Willian and Hudson Adoy for me. Now, at first I wanted to choose Hudson Adoy because he did look like when he came into the side, he was linking up very, very well indeed with Reese James, both occupying that right flank. It looks like it offered something superb, but the fact is he didn't have enough time in the team to demonstrate superb form. So I've got to go with Willian in this instance because he is very, very good off the ball, better than Hudson Adoy. And although he doesn't look as offensive as Callum, he just offers the team more, so it's Willian on the right wing. Now, honestly, this is so hard for me because <sighs> I'm not sure what to choose here. I'm literally gonna just like choose this while I film this video because obviously you should say Tammy Abraham, right? Tammy Abraham, because it's not, it's not to do with immediate fitness. He should be the choice. He scored the goals in the Premier League this season he's been good at times even if he's missed a lot of chances but Giroud these last couple of games has looked like the Giroud that you want in your team the glancing headers that to you know to set up Willian running on holding up the ball not getting bullied at all so so strong completely bullied Everton Olivier Giroud the kind of catalyst for the team that Tammy Abraham cannot do but saying that 
a fit Tammy Abraham so much more mobile than Olivier Giroud and if he's in form he will actually run in behind with the other forwards. He can hold up the ball, Tammy Abraham, he's getting better at it. Not, obviously not as good as Giroud who's the best arguably in world football at doing it. But for me, Tammy Abraham just edges it. And that's testament to how good Olivier Giroud has been playing at the moment. So there you have it. That's my starting 11. I'm going to put it up on the screen now next to me. Provided everyone's fit. And this is going off the form of this season, if fit. And also looking at how Frank Lampard's style of play works. Who works the best in his philosophy ethos in the 4 3 3 formation. So Kepa between the sticks. Alonso at left back. Uh, James at right back, the centre back, centre back, the centre back <laughs> partnership consisting of Rudiger and Christensen, a midfield of Billy Gilmore, Mason Mount, and Mateo Kovacic, and the front three consisting of Christian Pulisic, Tammy Abraham, and Willian. Anyway, what do you guys think? I'll be keen to hear your alterations to my starting eleven. Uh, going off the same rules that I built this team off, you do the same. Let me know what you change. Express yourself down in the comments. If you enjoyed the content, please do like the video. That means a lot. Why not subscribe to the channel if you're new? Well, that's it from me, ladies and gentlemen. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby